fly rods for fishing. Well, we're back and I'm still rowing up to get on these fish. There's a good little uh, current come through the lake today. It's a reservoir, it's not a lake. And uh, we've had a lot of rainfall, a lot of snow melt here last night and there, there's some good water movement here. But it's a good color of the lake. There's a little bit of tint to it, which is perfect for a brown trout day. I'm gonna go way up and let's just drift right through it. Couple more casts, I got my fish. We're just re-drifting down the lake. There's a small amount of current pushing us through. Boy, he's right in the sun. Oh, he's a nice one though. Well, watch this, I can take him around this side. Now we can see him. <laughs> There's that leech right in his lip. Very healthy up here too. They've been, I've been fishing these for 20 years. It's always great. Now I switched back to the smaller hail bop. These are a Spirit River fly that I got from Bill Black or Spirit River. So if you're interested in them, go on spiritriver.com or go to hogquest.com and link them over from us. And you can get these, order them. Or you can go to a local fly shop that sells Spirit River and get them. I got another fish on it. Didn't take very long. See him rolling out there. He looks like about a 15 inch. Brown trout death roll. Another beautiful little trout. Well, they always have orange spots, but some are bigger orange spots with a lot of black dots like this guy. Now, leeches are found in most forms of water, so this is a technique that can work almost anywhere. Anywhere you're going to have trout, you're probably going to be able to use this technique and be very successful. That's a good thing to do if you got a current in the lake like we do here. We go up to one end of it and just let it just free float us down. Fish a lot of ground that way without having to do any work on the boat. Beautiful brown trout. There he goes. There you go. In the water. I've done better releases, but you know, when they flip out your hand, that's what happens. If he had been hurt, I'd ate him. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice fresh one. Going to a smaller one? Yeah, going back to what's one he's using. We did real, he did real well with that last time we were up here, and he's out fishing me right now with it, so I'm gonna try to change that. Get down with what's going on. So I'm stripping, stripping. Sometimes I'll stop and hesitate it too, and that's when he grabbed it. You know, they'll, they'll come up and think it's wounded, and you know, a wounded fish or something will stop. It'll move and it'll stop. And that's what I did there. I think that's why I grabbed it. Ah, how nice I can hand land them. There you go. There's a beautiful little trout. There you go, buddy. Go, go, go. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm sorry. I'm just having too much fun doing this. Oh, head shaker. It's kind of small. Let's keep around pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Oh, we almost had doubles. Really close. I doubled. Does that count if he's still releasing his fish and I hook up? No, little guy. There you go, little guy. There you go. Didn't have much of his lip there, did I? Look at that, just barely. And there's the sun. I'm just gonna put a little, put a little pro scent on there. Oops. There he goes. And we're not doing so bad now. It's um, not a red hot bite, but it's. Uh, Every eight, nine casts, I get one to hook up. And then now that we're down in this deeper water, it seems to be a little more frequent. But it's nice to go up on the flats because sometimes them bigger trout are in there searching for minnows and food, and they're hiding out under logs and moss and stuff. So you get up in those flats and work around, you can get some pretty good sized fish. But it doesn't mean we can't get good fish down here too. Last time I was here, I hooked into about 25 inch or just over my shoulder here. That was beautiful fish. But I lost him, so I'm back trying to get him. So we'll be back with some hog quest out here on the trout fishing.